forget about it tonight. What is this, a kidnapping? Merely a little social visit. This way, please. What for? That you will soon learn. You will come with us as you are. Please. I'm not working on the formula. Lying would do you no good, Mr. Oliver. It's very dangerous. I'm not lying. I'm telling you the truth. Who is working on Formula 311 besides yourself? Is it Norton or Healy? I don't know. I've told you a thousand times I don't know. Someone in the New Lean chemical plant is working on the formula. Who is it? I don't know. I don't know! And why did Mr. Reynolds say that either you nor nor Fielding were working on it? Reynolds is wrong. I'm not working on 311. Norton and Fielding may be working on it. I'm not even in that department. The company could tell you that. All right, Mr. Oliver. I believe you are telling the truth. Thank you for coming here. Heinrich, turn on the light. Thank you, schön, Heinrich. Wolf, see that our good friend gets safely home. You mean I can go home? Certainly. Please accept my apologies for this inconvenience. This way, please. Oliver is already home. And so quickly, too, Captain Gimler. Did Carl Schmidt send the dossiers on this Norton and Fielding? Yes, complete. Good, let me have them, please. You must lose no time. Robert Norton might be rather difficult to do business with Heinrich. 
He has no bad habits. He's very studious. An exceptionally hard-working young man. His family? An orphan, unfortunately. How about Herr Fielding? Oh. Fielding's record is much more interesting. It will be easier to persuade, I think. He is inclined to be a trifle headstrong and reckless. Gambles occasionally. He spends many of his evenings in bar. He is perhaps then attracted to women. Attracted is hardly the word, Heinrich. I work for the farm would be extremely difficult, Captain. Were it not that most men have the same weakness for a pretty face and a pretty figure. What about his family? Yes. A mother and a sister, to whom he is very much attached. His sister Nancy is private secretary to Franklin Prescott, head of the New Lean Chemical Corporation. That is good. Perfect. Give me operator K3. Fielding? Hello, Mac. How's everything down at the plant? Oh, couldn't be better. Getting on high all the time. That's fine. What are you going to have? Oh, bourbon and soda. Come, Linda, or we will be late. I told you, Hendrick, I would not go with you. I do not care for your friends. But they expect you. I cannot disappoint them. I am sorry, Hendrick. It is useless to walk you. I am not going. Then I shall go alone. I do not plead with any woman, especially in public. Good night. but always reliable. You are very kind. Who's willing to help a lady in distress? You say very nice things. How come I've never seen you around before? Maybe because I come from Poland. See, my family was broken up by the invasion. So, I come to America. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, about your family, I mean. <laughs> uh, my name is Fielding, Tom Fielding. I am Linda Pavlo. Oh, that's a cute name. That's intriguing. Uh, tell me, does your, does your friend get glad as easily as he gets mad? He is not really my friend. Only recently did I meet him. I'm glad to hear that. Because from now on, you and I are going to see a lot of each other. How about a drink? Okay? If okay means yes, okay. Okay. <laughs> Mac, coming up. Uh, two bourbons. morning. It's practically noon. The old man will forgive me. Besides, I haven't been late in a long time. Yeah, I guess you're right there. If you weren't such a good carrot, you would have been fired long ago. <laughs> I'd have been fired a long time ago if it hadn't been for you, Bob. Of course, I will admit I'm one of the greatest little chemists that ever balanced a test tube. Says you. <laughs> Where'd you go last night? Another merry-go-round? I'm still going around in circles. Boy, you ought to see what I found for myself. The cutest little refugee. From what? Well, now you guess. 
I'll bet she has the cutest little accent. <laughs> You're not kidding. Where'd you meet her? Some bar? And what's wrong with that? Oh, nothing, but I just remember that the last girl you met in the bar was going to sue you for breach of promise. Remember? I'll say, listen, Tom, why don't you cut out all this foolishness and come down to earth? Someday you're going to get yourself into a jam you won't be able to get out of. Go ahead, go ahead, lecture me. I can take it. Oh, I'm not trying to tell you what to do, but... Well, I'm just getting sick and tired of you going on year after year making the same mistakes. Everybody can't be as lucky as you, Bob. Oh, by the way, have you insist set the date yet? No, can't be till after the war now. There's lots to be done, and it won't be long before you and I'll be right in the middle of it. Suits me. I look good in a uniform. Meanwhile, a little fun is good for the soul. Mr. Prescott's office. Miss Fielding speaking. Good morning, Nancy. Oh, hello, Bob. <laughs> well, tell Prescott I'll have that report up to him early this afternoon. Yes. Yes, he's here, but a little the worse for wear and tear. But he'll probably survive. <laughs> Will you tell him the next time he gets in at 4 o'clock in the morning that I'll be waiting for him with a rolling pin? Don't forget you're having dinner with us tonight. Goodbye, Bob. What you're trying to tell me, Mr. Curtis, is that Reynolds and Oliver were murdered in a direct attempt to secure information on our 311 formula. Exactly. That's why I flew in from Washington. Yeah. It sounds impossible. Now, hold on, Mr. Prescott. Although the bodies of Oliver and Reynolds were found miles apart without a clue on them, they both did work here as chemists, didn't they? Very disturbing, I must admit. But, uh... Mr. Prescott, just let me ask you a question. If you were an enemy of this country and you discovered we had a process, which by the simple addition of a few grams of a secret formula to a gallon of gasoline would double its power output, wouldn't you do anything in the world to get it? Admittedly. But after all, in this plant, we're only working on one part of the formula. Charles Smith at the number one plant back east is working on the other part. Smith was working. A few days ago, he quit his job and disappeared. And uh, headquarters is convinced he took a copy of the formula with him. Preposterous. Why, Smith has been in the organization for years. Our recent investigations show that your Charles Smith is actually Professor Carl Schmidt of Leipzig. Probably one of the cleverest and most unscrupulous scientific spies ever to come out of Europe. If what you say is true, the situation is serious. Well, we've got to face the facts. Tell me, Mr. Prescott, if this formula were entirely in the hands of an enemy, could they actually make use of it? Undoubtedly, Smith could put it together. You see, Smith is, uh, or was, working on one part of the formula, we on another here. Those two parts, plus an ingredient of which this bottle is a sample, properly combined, would make 311. Pardon, sir. And uh, incidentally, if that amount of 3B11 were improperly mixed, why, uh, why, there's enough there to blow this building off its foundation. Very dangerous business clear through. For the time being, I can't promise you any wholesale fireworks. Things aren't done that way. However, this Carl Schmidt must be apprehended at all costs. You're right. And I'll promise you that Norton and Fielding will be guarded night and day. Without them knowing it, of course. I see. Say, Tom, not a word of what Prescott said about Oliver and Reynolds. Okay, Bob. Hello, Bob. Hello, Nancy. Hey there, what's the matter? No greeting? Hello, it says. <laughs> Come on, children, hurry up. Dinner's almost ready. I'm sorry, Mother, I have a date for dinner. Dear me, Tom, and I cook such a nice dinner, too. <laughs> Will you just keep a sandwich in the icebox for me? <laughs> all right, darling. Uh, I have to change, so I'll see you all later. 
Well, there he goes. Say, what kept you so late? Oh, gosh, I... I have to work, honestly. Oh, you're so wrapped up in those chemicals of yours. Uh, I sure am. After all, you're just a bunch of chemicals yourself, aren't you? I am not. What? Not even just a little touch on that beautiful face of yours? Oh, I think you're horrid. Come on, children. Dinner's ready. Okay, Mom. It's your turn, Ed, to get the report into Curtis. Yeah. I always get the light shed. Feeling your man. Take good care of him. I'll keep an eye out on Norton. I always get on these bunion derbies. <laughs> You're just being patriotic. Conserving rubber. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See you later. Okay. Dinner? Uh, what about champagne cocktails? Yes. Champagne cocktails. 
for two? For two. Sir. Who, me? You are Mr. Fielding, are you not? Well, yes, but how would anyone know I was here? I believe it was a Mr. Norton. Oh, the old snooper, how did he know I was here? Oh, will you excuse me? I'll be right back. Hurry. There was no call for you, my friend. What do you mean, no call for me? I merely wanted to speak with you. Privately. There must be some mistake. I, I've never met you before. Never make a mistake, Mr. Fielding. Never. Well, sit down. You work on the New Lean chemical plant. You are living with your mother and charming sister. And you love them very much. Then, uh, you wouldn't want something to happen to them, would you? What are you talking about? You wouldn't dare. We dare anything. Your family would be perfectly safe if you do as we ask, working on that formula alone. Uh -huh. You answer me with your stubborn silence. It is not, not you. Are you looking for something, sir? This is the way out. Thanks. Good night, sir. Good night. Now, Mr. Fielding, we understand each other. We are free to go. Mr. Fielding. It would be best to mention this interview to no one. To no one, understand? And please remember, we are determined to get that gasoline formula, either from you or your friend, Mr. Norton. Understand? Yes, I think. Very well. You will be contacted again for further instructions. Goodbye. And remember, your mother and sister Herr Gimmler, was advised to let him go? 
I never make mistakes. Heinrich, have you ever heard of that beautiful friendship of uh, Damon and Pythia? Ah, I begin to understand. Nice work, sister. I was just following out instructions, Mr. Fielding. If you and your friends think you're going to get away with this, you have another thing come. That we shall see. Good night. I must have left my keys in my other coat. Where's Mom? Well, in bed, hours ago. Oh, I hope I didn't disturb her. Well, what's the matter? Aren't you well? No, I, I'm all right. What time did Bob leave? Oh, he left a while ago. Sis, has he ever spoken to you about his work? Well, yes, once or twice, but nothing important. His, his papers, did he ever show them to you? Well, of course not. Why are you asking me these things? I don't know. I guess I'm just worried. It's not important. Shall I mention it to him? No, 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 no. Uh, just, just forget it. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Good night, Tom. And please stop worrying. I said forget it. Good night. Good night. I want the formula. Formula. Reynolds and Oliver. Remember your sister. Formula! 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 Don't do it, Tom. Remember your mother.
Say, what's the idea of showing me up by getting to work in the middle of the night? Performing? I was just making up for yesterday morning. a boy. What about the refugee? Oh, skip it. Wrong number. So the process check on 311. Did you take it? Well, what would I do with it? Nothing, I guess. Oh, well, it's not important. I can work it out again. Research lab, Norton speaking. Yes, sir. Who was it? Prescott wants me to come up to the front office. Good morning, Nancy. Good morning, Bob. Aren't you smiling this morning? Well, to tell you the truth, I'm worried about Tom. Has anything happened? Why? Not that I know of. Why? Well, he came home last night all out of sorts. Really not at all like himself. Maybe he's been unlucky in love. You know he's got a new girl, a refugee. Well, I hope that's all that's troubling him. Well, come on, we'd better go in. Mr. Prescott's waiting for you. There you are, sir. Good morning, Bob. Good morning, Mr. Prescott. Hi, Curtis. Good morning, Norton. Pull up a chair and sit down, Bob. Thank you. I want to ask you a few questions. Go right ahead. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary this morning with Tom Fielding? Was he upset or nervous or anything like that? Well, I, <laughs> I didn't notice anything unusual. He's, he's always a bit grumpy in the morning. Norton, I'm going to give it to you straight. Last night, we assigned two men to watch both you and your friend. You left the Fielding home at 9.45. Stopped at the night owl for a ham sandwich and a cup of coffee. After that, you bought a newspaper. Went straight home and stayed there until you came to work this morning. Is that correct? That's right. On the other hand, Fielding left home at 7.30. After that, we lost all trace of him until he came to work this morning. Well, I thought you had a man following him. Yes, we did. He was found this morning in the riverbed. Murdered. Murdered? Surely you don't suspect Tom. This much is clear. Our Fielding's activities last night. Oh, where Fielding went. Uh, he did mention something about a dinner engagement last night. Where? Well, he didn't say. Did he say with whom? Oh, no, he didn't tell me, but I'm, I'm sure he'd be glad to tell you himself. Uh, perhaps. But I'd rather use the human angle. Now, we feel that you have his confidence, and I want your help. Oh, but... Surely you can't believe that Tom would sell out his, his country. This country's at war, Norton. Nothing can be left to chance. Nothing must be left to guesswork. We've got to know. Of course. This puts me in a pretty tough spot. You see, Tom and I are pals. He's, he's going to be my brother-in-law. Well, I'll, I'll do anything I can to help. Thanks. Handle it any way you think best. What was that? Nothing important. I wonder what happened to those notes. Oh, <laughs> you big monkey, stop squawking. Is that what you were looking for? It was probably there all the time. I looked all over the floor before I went to Prescott's office. Maybe you're getting blind in your old age. Somebody put those notations there while I was gone. You, you mean I did it? Yes. Well, have it your way. Look, why didn't you tell me about the refugee? I told you before to skip it. Where did you go last night? Around, places. What places, for instance? That is absolutely none of your business. Oh, I don't know. Maybe it is my business. The man who was assigned to protect you last night was murdered. What? Curtis had us both shattered. My man reported in alive. Where was he killed? Don't you know? 
But you, you don't think I had anything to do with it? No, no, I don't, but Curtis does. And, oh, Tom, maybe I could help you a little bit. If only you'd confide in me. I can't, so don't ask me. Let me figure it out for myself. Otherwise, it would only mean trouble. Trouble is right. Oh, but we can't duck it, Tom. Don't you see this is bigger than you or I? It means trouble for Uncle Sam. Oh, Tom, we're pals, and I, I hate this just as much as you do. But don't you see how important all this is? Now, what about this girl, this refugee you met? Where did you go? All right, I'll tell you. Oh, and I'm so sorry. Excuse me. Please don't worry. It was nothing. Bless you, mister. May you soon have a hundred thousand dollars. A hundred thousand dollars? Yes. All cash. Perhaps a lot more. A smart young man has many opportunities these days. <laughs> you have marvelous vision. Yes. Tom Fielding had dinner here last night, and he recommends the place very highly. I'm glad Mr. Fielding enjoyed his dinner. Mm, I, I think I'll have some Yankee pot roast and lots of coffee to keep me awake. Yes, sir. And Miss Pablo. She's a friend of Mr. Fielding. Well, how do you do? How do you do? Won't you join me? I would be delighted. Oh, you're the young lady that had dinner with him last night. Why, yes. Tom told me he enjoyed your company very much. Did he tell you anything else? Why, yes. He, he said I could trust you. That was very thoughtful of him. But, uh... I wonder if you are to be trusted. Confidence is sometimes based on stronger motives than mutual trust. Ah, I begin to understand. Yes, your relationship is very clear now. Oh, fine. But you know, I, I feel as if you knew all about me long before this. I did. You are Bob Thornton. And now we can talk, yes? Definitely. I came here for that purpose. And I'm ready to listen. Without ceremony? Of course. Briefly, some friends of mine are interested in the new lean formula, 311. And they are willing to purchase a copy of it. In times like these, your friend's interest in 311 might mean a firing squad. You are smart, Mr. Norton. We also are smart. None of us are blundering fools. Well, then, of course, your friends realize that I have access only to a part of Formula 3 level. We are aware of that, too. Nevertheless, if you are willing to keep your mouth shut and act quickly, you may continue to live a very wealthy man. What do you call wealthy? Well, say, $100,000? $100,000? All cash. I do not expect your answer now. Just think over what you have been told until you are contacted again. By you? Perhaps. But before leaving, let me give you a word of warning. A 
guarded tongue never speaks unwisely. And remember, every move you make from now on will be known to us. It's been so nice talking to you. Good night. Good night. It's been a great pleasure meeting you here. I think now everything is ready. Heinrich, code a message to Carl Schmidt. Have him board the Dawn Express and fly west immediately. Yes, sir. Very nice of you to have sent your friend. He has such a fine talk. And I think everything worked out favorably. My friend? Yes, Mr. Knock. Well, I didn't send him over to you. You're very sensible, Mr. Fielding, to be so kind. I will get in touch with you again. Goodbye. Hello? Hello? some cigarettes. Oh, wait a minute. I have plenty of cigarettes. Say, so let's go in and sit down. I, I'd like to talk to you. All right, Bob. Thank Why you. didn't you tell me all that happened at the Alpine Grill? I told you everything. What do you mean? Why didn't you tell me those birds offered you a hundred thousand for a little light treason? That's not so. Well, I suppose you're going to deny that you told them that I'm working on 311, too. Bob, why the devil don't you stay out of this? They're not going to stand for any tricks. They'll, they'll kill us all. <sighs> Nobody's going to be killed. Hello, Bob. How did you know you were here? Oh, I, I just stopped in to go over some figures with Tom. You boys are worried about something. Come on now, what is it? Oh, you're, you're wrong, Nancy. Oh, don't hold out on me, Bob. I've got eyes and I've got ears. And I've been watching and listening to both of you ever since Reynolds and Oliver were killed. You see, Nancy's right. She oh, knows. Be quiet, Tom. I won't. Why should I? Those were spies that killed Reynolds and Oliver, and they threatened to kill you and Mother, too. Well, not so loud. Mother will hear you. Oh, come on, be yourself. Let's, let's sit down and talk this thing over sensibly. He's right, Tom. Now listen, Tom, I know you're not going to take this thing lying down. It's up to people like you and me to face the music. Be a good soldier. But what can we do against all of them? Tom, there are 130 million of us. Bob, I'm sorry. I'll do everything I can to get us out of this. That's the stuff. We'll run those rats right back into the holes they came out of. I guess that's about all, Mr. Curtis. She offered me $100,000 and told me she'd contact me again. Oh, uh, <laughs> she warned me to keep my mouth shut. Then she left. And believe me, it didn't take me long to get out of there myself. Tell me, Norton, at any time during this conversation, was Schmidt's name mentioned? No. No, it wasn't. Well, without Carl Schmidt, it wouldn't do them any good to get it. Norton, I firmly believe that through you, we can bring Schmidt out in the open. Would you be willing to help us? <laughs> yes, of course. You know I would. Now, that's fine. Now, tonight I want you to... Uh... Good evening, Mr. 
Mr. Sullivan. Oh, good evening, Miss Fielding. Has my brother Tom been here tonight? Right you are. He came in just about ten minutes ago. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad he's here. I know what I'm doing. Tom! Evening. and enjoy some more of your good food. With pleasure, sir. Right this way. Oh, don't bother. Good evening. Hello. I'd hoped I'd find you here. Looks as if our new friend lacks this place. Maybe you're right. gentleman you are to do business with. I'm glad you came. Thank you. Smoke? Cigarette? No, thank you. You have come to a decision already. Do you accept the proposition I made? Well, I'm not sure. What do you mean? Well, I'd like to know what guarantee I have that I'll get full protection from you. Well, you have my word. I see. Did you bring the formula? Why, oh, yes. Uh, may I have it, please? What about the hundred thousand? All cash, now. My friend, I'm not a fool. You do not think I would give you good money for a piece of paper? Well, I uh, figured you were a chemist. You ought to know what this means. I wonder, Mr. Norton, if you're trying to play tricks. You came here without being properly contacted. <laughs> Certainly. I came here on my own account. I didn't want Fielding to beat me to it. <laughs> so typical. Pardon me, Mr. Norton. But you will not mind, I'm sure, if I take the precaution of not giving the money to you yet. First, this formula has to be uh, tested. Sure, by all means. Go ahead, test it yourself. Someone will come and make a test. After that, you will be paid. Who will make the test with me? One of the most marvelous scientists in the whole world. Professor Carl Schmidt. Professor Schmidt? Why, I'll be very happy to work with the professor. 
sorry I couldn't stop him. I thought I'd find you here. Did he try to sell you the formula? Why do you ask this? If he did, he's a liar. He couldn't give you the 311 formula without the part I have here. You can't give him that. Ah, then you have what I want most. That's right. With this, I could show any chemist in the world how to compound 311. Tom, do you realize what you're doing? If that stuff gets in the wrong hands, it'll be the end of all of us. Very well. You will now prove that you can mix the 311 formula. Oh, stop, you fool. We'll all be killed. Wait a minute. I'll go through with the bargain. I'll show you how to mix 311. But I don't want to see him killed. Of what interest is his life to you? None to me. But he means everything to my sister. Carl Schmidt will land on the Dawn Express in 15 minutes. 15 minutes? I haven't much time. Carl Schmidt cannot come here. That would be too dangerous now. It's that we go to meet him. Otto, Wolf, take feeling to the car. Eric, drive Linda home. Heinrich, tell Albus we are leaving this place for the South Airport. Yes. Schultz! Yes, sir. Tell Albus we are leaving. And you, Mr. Schultz, you take care of Mr. Norton in here. Yes, sir. Here, here, you can't go in there. Oh, leave me alone. You cannot go in there. You I can't. cannot do that. You can't go in there. I am going in there. I say you cannot go in there. You're under arrest. He's in there. Hurry. All right, men. Stand by. They've got Tom. They, they're taking him to the South Airport. Carl. Carl Smith. He, he's coming in on the Dawn Express. Hey, Carl just pulled out of the alley. All right, boys, cover this place. Come on, Brown. We're going to the South Airport. All right. Come on, Ed. We'll, we'll follow them. Linda, come quickly. I'll take you home. Dr. Shannon. Just a minute. Just sit right back down, please. We're under arrest.
Hi, Captain Gimna. Quick, we must go. Go, but we just shy. We must go quick. soon find out just how valuable he is to us. Get over to the dispatches and get a plane to follow that ship immediately. Yes, sir. If I understand what Tom's going to do, you won't need a plane to follow. What do you mean by that, Norton? Tom has a bottle of 3B11. If he mixes it the way I think he will, you'll see what I mean. Move that case, please. Let me show you how, Professor. What? You young upstart. You can teach me something? Me? Professor Carl Schmidt? Huh? Maybe, Carl. You should let him show you. Wait. Are you sure you know what you're doing? Yes. I know. What a glorious day for the fatherland. Heil Hitler! <laughs> 